What's good? Welcome to Ari Roars. This is Ari speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be talking about sex appeal. This is always a pretty fun topic to discuss, am I right? But I'm not going to be doing a cute, fun, how to be sexy type of video. I really wanted to bring to you this anecdote and something that I experienced to help us have a framework of how sex appeal actually works and what we can do to hone the best version of ourselves through the sex appeal that we naturally have within us. So I'm going to be telling a story and it's going to guide us through this whole video. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then just keep on watching. So here's the story. I was in Starbucks, I was getting some work done, spending quite some time there. And before I get into it, I'm going to be talking about what some women were wearing, okay? I just want to make it very plain and clear. I'm not judging them. In fact, I dress like both of these women, so <laughs> I won't be judging. I'm just using this because, for one, this is exactly actually what happened in real life, but also it helps to give us a little bit more perspective on sex appeal. So just stay with me to the end of the video and you will understand why it's good that I'm talking about what they're wearing and what they're wearing can be good either way. So getting into it, a woman comes in the store and there's a man who notices her. She gets in line and we're both sitting down, me and the man sitting somewhere near me, but the woman is in line standing and she's wearing these white shorts. They're kind of like really thin legging material, booty shorts, um, and they're white. And the woman, okay, let's be so for real. <laughs> it was hard to miss. She had a she was dragging a wagon. <laughs> we'll, we'll say that much, okay? So this woman was dragging a wagon behind her and the man was just staring at this wagon. If you don't know what I'm saying, I'm talking about her patootie. I just, I wanna keep it clean. This is the very beginning of the video, y'all. I don't wanna be too explicit. Patootie, that's what we're gonna call it for the duration of this video. <laughs> As she's standing in line, he's staring at her patootie for like a solid 10 seconds straight. I'm watching this happen. Why am I watching it? Because I don't ask. I don't. He looks down for a second, you know, maybe five to 10 seconds, and he does it again, 10 seconds of just full focus on this patootie. And then eventually it's like, he never looks back. He, he just went back, mind his business after that. And that was the end of their interaction. I mean, his interaction that she was unaware of because it was behind her back, but I was aware of both of them. And eventually she leaves the store, he leaves the store, I'm still there. Another man comes in, he sits somewhere near where that first man sat. And then another lady had came in as well. But this time it was different. She was just wearing like, what? She was dressed nicely, but she was wearing like flare, dark wash jeans, like a nice fitted jacket, some ankle booties. And she was looking like put together, kind of like a business to smart casual type of outfit. There was nothing about her that stood out, like no body part. There, she didn't have like unique facial features. Her hair wasn't anything dramatic. Her outfit was like a very muted. Color. There was nothing about her that was standing out. But what I noticed was that as she was leaving the store, she caught this man's attention. And he was staring at her leaving the store. He looked out the window. She's walking down the stairs. She's turning, getting into her car, open the car door, sits down, goes it. All that he's watching her the entire time and i'm watching him watching her because i'm like huh it was just really interesting because i'm like okay both of these women are beautiful absolutely but the second woman she didn't have anything about her that stood out to me like there was nothing where i could be like oh he must be looking at blank whether it was her face her hair her body her jacket like there was nothing about her i couldn't pinpoint what was he looking at and in fact he wasn't really if he was looking at anything in specific, he would have lost a view of it at some point because she was walking and turning and everything. So it was like, he couldn't have been looking at any specific part of her. And that's when I got the revelation that both of these women had a sex appeal, but both of these men were incited by them for different reasons and in different ways. And that is basically the premise of this video. So in typical educator's fashion, let's consider me an educator because I'm talking about things that I want y'all to understand. I looked up the definition of sex appeal. So I'm looking at the definition right now. This comes from Collins Dictionary, two definitions. The first one, the ability to excite people sexually. And the second one, immediate appeal or obvious potential to interest or excite others as by appearance, style, or charm. And Interestingly enough, those were the two different types that I witnessed going down in that space. 
So real quick, I wanna pull away from this example, this storyline and dig deeper into the context of these two different types of sex appeal. As you can see in the definitions, one of them is related to lust and the other is related to love. And at the same time, the sex appeal is two pronged, right? We have the person who is sexy and the person who is incited by that person's sex appeal. So we'll call them an insight E and an insight er. Insight E is the person who is looking, the men in the situation. The insiders were the woman in this situation. But again, pulling away from the example, I am not determining anyone in any category right now, except some of it is gonna be pretty obvious as soon as I start talking, but other parts require a little bit more depth and discussion. So the two types of sex appeal, right? The lustful one, this is one who is hyper-focused on a specific part of the whole. You know, you have this person or this thing or whatever, and it's not the whole thing that attracts you. It's not the whole thing that is reeling you in. It's a specific piece of it, a specific part, something that you want, something that you have a high regard for or you expect to give you a lot of pleasure, just this one specific piece. And then love. This is more so a there's something about them type of situation. Um, you're not focusing on any specific piece. It's the whole being where you're just like, wow, I love seeing this happen in front of me. The presence of this being is my pleasure. There's no part that's better than the whole. And then looking at it from the perspective of the inciters, yes, we still do have a role to play in sex appeal, but I'm really going to dig into it later. So don't think that I'm telling you that you asked for it and someone lusts over you. That's not what I'm saying. Just listen, just wait. <laughs> we can intentionally create sex appeal in ourselves by way of lust and that comes through the form of seduction. And seduction always comes with inconsistency, meaning I'm gonna do something different and kind of manipulate the situation right now so that I can seduce. You're gonna carry yourself a different way at the club than you would do at the family reunion. So that seduction is related to lust. And then on the other end, related to love is confidence. The most beautiful thing, you know, I made a video about confidence, like it's uploaded like two videos back. So definitely watch that if you wanna learn a little bit more about confidence. But confidence is really just, you know, I know what's good about me. I know what I love about me. I know what's lovable about me and it comes with a consistency you know this every day <laughs> you're going to carry yourself with that knowing consistently every day and it just doesn't change and people aren't going to love that you know your in-laws might be like why is she wearing cleavage she's a whore <laughs> i don't know that just seems like a common like narrative there you're just going to be yourself express yourself the way that you always do you're not going to change your voice when you get around guys or you know you're just going to stay you all the time so now that we've unpacked that let's go ahead and bring it back to the anecdote the storyline that we had discussed already the first man who was looking at the lady with the white shorts right he was focused on her patootie after he got a good look at the patootie he didn't look at her again he didn't care because he had a lustful gaze upon her and the sex appeal that he picked up from her was all based on lust. Now the second man, focusing on the woman who was just kind of well-dressed for her day, love. It was based in love because he was looking at all of her in totality, 360 degree. He was observing her mannerisms and the way that she walked, the way that she got in her car. He was just watching her. When he lost view of one part of her, he just ended up looking at the other parts. You feel me? It wasn't like, oh, I can't see her butt anymore, so why look at her? You feel me? You feel me? You feel me? You feel me? And then this is my favorite part. This is what I've been building up to. This is my favorite part. <laughs> the insiders, the people, the woman in this situation. Unrelated, totally unrelated to what the male gaze told them or what the male gaze was incited by. You can put out confidence and you can still receive back lust. You can put out seduction and still receive back love. Now, in either of those situations, if you are aware of it, it's going to feel a little bit off. Like, 
if that woman had come out, you know, wearing the white shorts, not intending to seduce anyone, but just, she just, that's what she had on. She wanted to quickly go to Starbucks, get some stuff and go. And she happened to turn around and see that this man was like gawking on her, you know, she would have probably felt a little bit uncomfortable by that. But if it was on purpose, if her whole intention was to get some attention to her patootie, then when she would have turned around and saw him looking at her, she probably would have been like, <laughs> you know, thought it was cute or I was flattered or, or she might have just pretended to be rude and offended. But deep down, she was just kind of glad it happened anyway. I know y'all girls because I'm a girl too, okay? I know how we work. Then on the other hand, maybe the second woman actually is not confident. You know, maybe she is attempting sex appeal and I just didn't notice anything that she was trying to highlight. You know, maybe she was walking in a certain way that just didn't catch my attention, but maybe the man saw the way she was walking and that was like a lustful kind of walk that was seductive and I highly doubt it, y'all. She just looks so normal. <laughs> But, you know, just to be realistic about the situation, there's a chance that she was just carry, carrying herself the way she always does in confidence. Or there's a chance that she had some kind of other intentions, ill will, or just simply insecurity and not even fully being aware that she has any sex appeal at all. And the same would go for the first woman as well. And I say all that to say the following things. This is really how we bring the whole thing together really want to break down what this means for us especially as women you know um, because sex appeal is really it's a heavy weight for women and something that we feel like we have to maintain rather than men you know men can just be somebody and women feel like they have to look like somebody and that's not the case you know we all want to be somebody and how we look is only the smallest part of it, but a lot of the time, whatever is going on on the inside of you, it tends to reflect on the outside in some ways. So, you know, I could just sit here and like harp on this for the longest, but I truly do care about body image. I think that that's a major um, concern for people in this day and age. However, I want to pull us back from the mirror and really help us to see this from a deeper perspective. So what does this mean for us? First of all, is that we cannot control how people view us. We can't control how people see us. The way that people are incited by our sex appeal has nothing to do with us. And you might be seen as being seductive or hypersexual in the way that you're presenting yourself, even when you have the purest intentions, even when you're not thinking about that at all. We have to be comfortable with the fact that there's a difference between what we put down and what they pick up. The next thing, and this is very significant and very important, especially with all the BBLs and augmentations happening right now, which no judgment on that either, just, I'm gonna address that with the next piece, but you don't have to subscribe to conventional standards of beauty in order to be sexy. Subscribing to the beauty standard in order to achieve sex appeal is the same as seducing people and being shifty in the way that you present yourself for a specific reason of getting people attracted to you. You don't have to change yourself based on who you're around. You don't have to change yourself in any way. All you have to do is be yourself because the truth of the matter is if what you really want is love and to attract the people who actually love you, who actually see you for who you are, love every part of you, can look at your biggest flaw or what you feel is your biggest flaw and love that. And also love the thing that you are most confident about. If you want those people to come into your life, if you wanna attract those people and even possibly appeal to the gaze of those people, that requires you to have confidence in yourself and requires you to be consistent in the same person everywhere you are and every day. And it specifically requires you to not subscribe to culture's beauty standards because how is someone gonna love who you are when you're not who you are? And the absolute most important part of this video that I want you to hold on to for the rest of your life is that sex appeal, it starts in the heart. It's a matter of the heart. The purity of the heart is what gives you the confidence that you need to receive the love that you desire. If you're insecure, you're going to err towards seduction. If you have weak character, you know, that you're you're not firm in your morals and your beliefs, 
you're going to err towards seduction and lust. If you have a weak spirit, you are prone to erring towards lust, leaning into seduction. And that's why we need God, people. That's why we need Jesus. But it's really important for us to anchor ourselves to what we know to be true so that we're not shifty and trying to convince people. That's what seduction is doing. Seduction is, I want to convince people externally of what I don't believe inside of me. Confidence is, I want to portray externally what I know for sure inside of me. So you're basically flipping it. With seduction, now it's like, ah, this person is attracted to me when I do this, so maybe that means I'm attractive. Confidence says, I'm attractive, so I'm going to do this because I want to. And now I can see that people recognize that as well. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's going to flip it, and it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy either way. So might as well be based on truth. Might as well be based on reality. Might as well be based on who you actually are. So that's my little rundown on sex appeal. And I hope that this has given you the encouragement that you need to just be yourself, own yourself, own your natural sex appeal, and just let the opinions roll in however they come in. That's it. That's all I got for you. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, then like it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.